Good evening. Authority is given as a gift from God for the good of all. After Simon Peter's confession of faith, Jesus announces that the apostle is the rock on which the church will be built and promises him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. With this authority comes the responsibility to follow Christ's example of service. God entrusts both church and civic leaders with authority so that they may serve others in love. Please stand and worship the Lord in song. Let us sing together, Gather the People. Gather the people, enter the feast. All are invited, the greatest and least. The banquet is ready, now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. Around this table we dine as kin, beloved family of God. We share the body of Christ the Lord. Here we become what we eat. Gather the people, enter the feast. All are invited, the greatest and least. The banquet is ready, now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. Good evening. Let's continue with the symbol of God's care. That is in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is with you. We come together this evening as God's family. But the reality is that sometimes all of us have been part of a contentious family. Sometimes we haven't lived very well together as brothers and sisters. So before we continue, let's pause, reflect on our lives, and be forgiven. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And so then, may Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. Bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to of good will. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. O oh God, you cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts might be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this as we do all things through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. Eternal is your love, O Lord, eternal is your love. When I called, you answered me, O Lord, you built up strength within Eternal is your love, O oh Lord, eternal is your love. Your kindness, O oh Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Eternal is your love. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alle 
Alleluia, alle, alleluia, alleluia, alle, alleluia, alle, alleluia, alleluia. Upon this rock I will build my church. May the Lord be with you. This is a reading from his Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Alle, alleluia. Alle, alleluia. The president of a tea company was concerned about declining revenue. So he hired a public relations firm to assist him. The head of the PR firm said to the president, I have a great idea. Let's ask the Pope to change the words in the Our Father from give us this day our daily bread to give us this day our daily tea. The president thought, that's a great idea. And sure enough, the public relations man obtained an audience with the Pope. He said to the Pope, Holy Father, I will give you $100,000 if you change the words of the Our Father to give us this day our daily tea. The Pope said, I just can't do that. The PR man persisted. Okay, I'll give you half a million dollars if you change the words. Once again, the Pope said, I can't do that. The PR man continued. Okay, my final offer. I will give you a million dollars if you change those words. Pope said, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. Dejected, the PR man left the audience. He turned to his secretary and he said, I wonder how much he was offered by the bread people. (laughs) Now, obviously, that is not a true story. But I am going to tell you a true story. John XXIII, before he became Pope, had the name Angelo Roncalli. He was the Vatican ambassador to France. Once he was at a very fancy cocktail party, and walking into the cocktail party was a beautiful woman. And this beautiful woman had on a very revealing dress. One of the other ambassadors came over and said, Your Eminence, that is terrible. Everyone here is looking at her. The future pope said, you're wrong. Everyone is looking at me to see if I am looking at her. (laughs) In today's 
gospel story, we hear about Peter and his profession of faith. At the great dome of St. Peter's in Rome are inscribed these words, Tu es Petrus et Semper Hanc Petrum Aedificabo Ecclesia. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The words in today's gospel story. In our Catholic tradition, Peter, in this gospel story, was commissioned as the first leader of our church. If you will, the first pope. And in our tradition, what happened was this. Peter moved to Rome, and he became the first bishop of Rome. Subsequent bishops of Rome have been thought, in our Catholic tradition, to be successors of St. Peter and leaders of our church. What does that mean? to be the Pope. What's the Pope's role in our church? Well, in my mind, the most important functions of the Pope are these, to be a source of unity and a model of love. Down through the centuries, our church has been filled with popes who have been both saints and sinners. The first five popes in our Catholic tradition were all martyred. St. Peter, ultimately was crucified upside down on Vatican Hill, the spot where today St. Peter's Basilica has been constructed. In the Renaissance period, there were popes who waged war and made their children cardinals. One pope allegedly said, God has given us the papacy, let us enjoy it. One of the most misunderstood concepts in our church is this, papal infallibility. Archie Bunker said once, I would never belong to a church whose head man was inflammable. <laughs> well, what does infallibility mean? It doesn't mean that we need to like or even agree with everything that the Pope says, nor does it mean that we should casually jettison out the window what the Pope says. Fundamentally, it means this. When the Pope speaks as leader of the church on issues that reaffirm, reiterate, clarify the core vision of the church, he is preserved from error. All the words of that sentence are really important. Especially important in my mind are those two words, core teachings of the church. To some extent, we can say that the church is infallible. In fact, the church reminds us that the church is infallible. You are infallible. I am infallible. Insofar as we reiterate, reaffirm those core teachings of the church. Now, certainly that does not mean that our church has always made wise decisions. In recent times, there's been the terrible scandal of clergy sexual abuse. There has also been at times a, a certain rigidity about the implementation of church discipline. And yet at the same time, the church has been faithful to that core vision of Jesus. That's the promise given to us in the gospel story, that he will be with the church for all times, in all ages. Pope Francis was once asked by an interviewer, who is Jorge Bergoglio? That was his name before he became Pope Francis. And he replied, I am a sinner. At the risk of correcting a pope, I would like to say that perhaps there could be a bit of a nuance there. I think it might also be said, I am a good man who is also a sinner. That is true for me, and it is true for you. We are all in process. Now, some of you might be saying, okay, okay, what's this have to do with me? Well, I think it has a great deal to do with all of us. When Francis was elected, he came out on the balcony of St. Peter's for the first papal blessing. And he did something that, in my memory, had never been done before. He didn't just come out and bless the people. What he did was this. He invited the people to bless him. That was an invitation to all of us, to 
to recall that we are in this journey of faith together. And so then, let's support each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's be a blessing for one another. Together, let's all of us be the best church that we can. Stand now and profess the faith that joins us. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. There he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. for Pope Francis, that he may be guided by the Holy Spirit as he binds and loosens here on earth, so that we may grow ever closer to truly realizing the mission of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For our elected leaders, that they may be guided by empathy for the people that they serve and consider the effects of their decisions that they make on the least of them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray. For students, teachers, and administrators at the beginning of this new school year, that they return to the classroom eager to discover new things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray. For those suffering from chronic illnesses and for their caregivers and loved ones, that they may be given courage and hope to endure the crosses they bear. We pray to the Lord. For all of us here today, that by the way we serve those who are in need, we may reveal who the Lord is to our community and our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the intention of this Mass, John Hurley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the needs that rest in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we do know you hear our prayer. So we come here, we speak to you. Pray you grant these needs if they be for good, as this day as all days. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together, God is building a house. God is building a house. God is building a house. God is building a house that will stand. God is building by a plan with living stones of woman and man. God is building a house that will stand. We are part of this house. We are part of this house. We are part of this house that will stand. We are members of the body, and in Christ we are made one. We are part of this house that will stand. Let's pray now, my sisters and brothers, that these gifts will be pleasing to our loving God. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, you gain for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. We pray this through Christ the Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise up to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and have filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, and you never cease through her to gather the whole family into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, the church dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ our Lord you promised last to last for all centuries. And so we join then with angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we sing. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, and you love the human race, and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and of wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Therefore Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. Look with favor on the sacrifice of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the end of time among the members of your Son. Lord, renew your church by the light of your gospel, Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and pastors of your church, together with Francis our Pope and Charles our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people might shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, especially those who mention by name and quiet.
Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we might come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, in communion with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, and the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints, who shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory, our honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now pray with trust and confidence to our common God and use the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord, from all that is evil, grant us peace in our time. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from worry as we wait in joyful hope for the coming again of our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are you. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, you say to us, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our faults, but on our faith. And grant us the peace and unity of the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. And let's share with each other now a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. sing together as we celebrate using the words of Peter, you are the Christ. As we celebrate this day, so we celebrate your life with us, your love for us, your light in our world. You are the Christ. In you we find our unity, community, our joy and our peace. As we celebrate this day, so we celebrate your life with us, your bread of life, the bread of hope, true bread for the world. As we celebrate this day, so we celebrate your life with us, your love for us, your light in our world. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Stand now and conclude our prayer. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we might please you. We pray this through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing together, City of God. We are sons of the morning. We are daughters of day. The one who has loved us has brightened our way. The Lord of all kindness has called us to be a light for his people to set their hearts free. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. O city of gladness, your voice, proclaim the good tidings that all may rejoice. Let us build the city of God, may our tears be turned into dancing, for the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night